it's a live um, view of what's going on on 3DV right now. That so as is soon as, so cool. So. Hey, this is James, November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima. I'm here with... Uh, Munir, K6AQ. And we are here at Dayton Hamvention. We are checking out Free DV. So Munir, could you tell us a little, what, what is Free DV? So Free DV is basically um, digital voice, but on HF. So think, for example, if you're familiar with DMR or DSTAR, yeah. that sort of thing. It's kind of like that, but you're working on HF instead of VHF and UHF. And the nice thing about FreeDV is there's no patents involved, so you don't have to like pay any money to actually start using it. Um, you can download the application right now and like for free of charge onto your Windows, Mac, or Linux computer and start operating the mode like you would for FT8, for example. That is awesome. And so, I mean, like, I think myself and many other people, very, very familiar with DMR, DSTAR, all of those things, but it's like people probably, a lot of people haven't really heard of free DV yet, but I mean, I think having something like that for HF is so valuable. Like, what was the inspiration for you? Did, did you just kind of see, hey, we need to get this type of digital mode onto uh, HF or? There's a little bit of history. So back in the, like 20 years ago, there was another um, program called FDMDV, okay. but it used a commercial codec that was kind of in this gray area where the company who owned it was like, didn't say no or yes. Because in yeah. amateur radio, the, uh, the protocols have to be public, right? Yes. Or they have to be, hey, it's public. Yeah, public. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem was that like people were using it and then the company one day decided, oh, we can't use it anymore for your amateur stuff. So that caused um, David Roby, K5DG over in Australia to start with the Codec Q library, which is the beginnings of like 3DV. So it basically had a bunch of open source digital voice codec type stuff. So are you um, one of the like developers on the project then? Yeah, I'm focused mainly on the front end interface for our official application, which wow. you can see right there. Yeah, come, come take a look at this. This is really cool. So right now, we have a demo right here where we're retransmitting a QSO that I recorded about a week ago. And we're going back and forth between analog and 3DV to see how it sounds. Wow. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how well you're going to be able to pick it up on the headset or anything like that, but... I can put the headset on and... Oh yeah, no, I can hear it excellently. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because I, I, I feel like when um, versus, you know, like FM or something like that, when I'm operating VHF or UHF, it's like with D, with digital modes, it's more like your signal kind of gets through or it doesn't, right? Right. Like when it gets through, it's more crisp. So is that what we would expect with free DV? If you get the digital signal through on HF, you get a more clean... Uh, so if the signal is able to be decoded, then you will hear it pretty much full quality. The nice thing about free DV is that we're based on all the advancements we've been doing in the last year, on top of improving your auto quality, we've also improved the robustness. So we're able to get down to about a minus five decibel signal to noise ratio. So that's, that's a cool. significant improvement over normal sideband. Yeah, and so that's, I mean, if your bands are bad or you're working with some less than ideal conditions. So, I mean, what do you what do you think will be some of the main uses for it? Do you think it'll be mostly experimentation? Do you think that people will use it in off-grid situations? Or, I don't know, what do you think maybe will be the biggest use for it? I think people will use it for all sorts of purposes, like kind of like what we're doing for sideband now eventually. Yeah. Um, one guy came in here earlier and was telling Telling me that his local um, MCOM group is starting to like just use 3DB extensively for their HF ops. That's so, awesome. like, that's like one example. And I can kind of see it going the same way like AM the sideband went, where people just more and more just started using sideband or 3DB rather it instead of sideband. Away from the AM, yeah. Like uh, for somebody that's watching this video and they want to get started with free DV, what do they do? Like, uh, do they download a uh, particular app? Do they go to your website? Like, what, what would you recommend them do? So basically, just go to um, freedv.org, um, website's up there, or the QR code, and there's a direct download link to the Windows program. You can just download it. Nice. There's also a Mac version too. Cool. You can download it, um, run the installer, and then once it's installed, then you can just set it up like you would any other digital app. That's awesome. And um, what I mean, what are you, what are you excited about for the project? Like, what are we? What do you? What would you say you're looking forward to? Maybe in the next year? Because it sounds like you guys did the stand in Dayton. You made a lot of progress in last year. What do you think? So I'm. One longer term thing is we would like to get free TV itself built into radios. So it would be just as simple as pushing the free TV button cool. on the radio instead of having to download something, right? Yeah. 
that, that makes total sense, yeah. And I mean, probably, I wonder if some of the like uh, SDR radios, like the flexes and stuff, maybe it's even easier because you could just install it as a package. Right. Instead of having to, um, well, I mean, I guess it would be firmware on the others like the mm -hmm. ICOM and the ASU, but a lot easier to update on some of the SDR stuff, probably. I, I would say so, yeah. Like, it, it really depends on how they are protected, the radio and that sort of thing. And that would be something we would have to discuss as part of an effort, integration effort, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Anything else? Like, what else should people know about FreeDB? So, definitely um, give it a try. Every third weekend of the month, there's Activity Day weekend where a whole bunch of FreeDB users get on and just have fun and operate. Um, that's awesome. There's also the FreeDB Reporter, which is the screen on the left right there. It's yeah, a live. Come. It's a live um, view of what's going on on FreeDB right now. That so as is soon as, so cool. So as soon as you push transmit, if you have internet access, you'll show up in red as transmitting. Ah, that's awesome. And if someone receives you, you'll like, or they'll have a blue background and they'll list your call sign as being received, right? Well, that's awesome. And we do, you know, we, we do the development for World Radio League too. So maybe there's a point where we can set, kind of integrate that or get the logging into World Radio League so people can use that new mode because it's not very often that you see people really start to use a new mode, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. that, I think what you guys are doing is very exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, cool. man. Thank you for nice to meet you. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.